Hello friends, welcome back to Mulez Academy. In today's session, we are going to discuss how we can use AnyPoint Code Builder to design our API. That means we are going to write a specification for a API requirement, okay? And we are going to use RAML 1.0 as our programming language, okay, for specification. So let's start with our, uh, you know, uh, requirement. But before that, since this AnyPoint Code Builder takes time to, you know, get uh, started. So before, uh, you know, jumping onto the, this session, I'll recommend everyone to please go through the introduction part of this code builder, how we can launch it, right? And how we can uh, use it as a, a brand new ID for MuleSoft, which is web-based, which is fast look and feel. You'll, 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 you'll see from one screen now, we can uh, design our API, we can implement API, we can build integrations, we can deploy it from here, we can publish it to the exchange, we can sync with the design center. All this will happen from one screen, okay? So let's get started. Before that, I'll encourage everyone to please go ahead, subscribe the channel, hit the like button, hit the bell icon, and do not forget to see the other content from the channel, okay? Thank you. So let's start it. So what I have uh, decided for this session to, let's pick one use case and uh, you know uh, start implementing in multiple sessions okay so i launch it it will take some time so we'll keep on coming to this screen okay so let's take the use case so our use case is uh, and i generally take uh, the the banking use case where i'll be having uh, you know a uh, bank api requirement from client so let's say the moment you say bank api right so this kind of resources will come into, you know, in your mind, like account, customers, transactions, balances. Okay. Now for this API, we are going to write a specification in RAML. Okay. Now for, for, for our uh, sessions, we'll use two resources, account and customer. And under these resources, we'll try to have these operations, CRUD operations. Okay. And our API should be secured with client ID and client secret uh, credentials. So we'll try to see how we can incorporate this security part. And we used to use design center for that. Now we are going to use any point code builder. This requirement I have already. So I used to use this design center, but now we have possible languages, but today we are going to use RAML 1.0. So scope RAML 1.0, okay. Uh, inside our uh, our accounts resources, uh, we'll try to use uh, URI parameters, query parameters, and we'll try to use the uh, verbs, which are get, put, post, and patch. We'll try to use uh, the the uh, different ports, different data types. Okay, and we'll try to see that in API what fragments okay we can keep globally so that those fragments can be used in our uh, multiple apis so kind of global data type okay so we'll start with creating global data type okay and then we'll have our api with fragmentation so we'll try to build our api specification using modularizations fragmentation so we'll see all kinds of fragmentation also here okay so before uh, going in deep, we'll try to build one simple data type. Okay. So for example, account data type, we'll publish this data type to our, our exchange. We'll sync this data type with our design center and we'll see what all things are involved in this uh, uh, two operations, publishing it and syncing with our design center. Okay. So let's get started. Let me see our, our, um, uh, you know, you know, code builder is loaded. Yes. So this, if you see, this is the, the uh, you know, RAML we have written for a session one, just simple RAML, hello world RAML. But today we are going to see uh, the separate or fresh new requirement. So we'll start with our design API option here. I'll close the old one. I give a simple name, account data type. And instead of API specification, in this session, we are not going to write specification. We'll create a fragment, which is a global data type, okay? And I'll browse and I'll say, you can take this, 
folder, we'll go ahead and we'll say data type. Okay, so we are going to create API fragment of type data type. And before creating specific gen, why I'm creating this? So I'll create this data type as a global data type, okay, global fragment, global asset, and I'll publish it to the exchange first. And then I'll try to refer this in my API specification. Okay, so let's go ahead and create a project. The moment I am creating this project, it's clearly saying that any point code builder platform extension is trying to sign in using any point platform. Allow, open. So it will do the hand checking between code builder and any point platform, and it will say close this now. So a hand check is done. It will create a specification for a fragment. Okay, not for an API. So once you see here, okay. Meanwhile, I'll try to open to design center in a new tab and exchange in a new tab. And let's see, is there anything got created in design center? Yes, I can see that account data type got created here as an API fragment. And in the exchange, you'll see nothing has been published yet. Okay, so these two things will be part of our session today. So let's go ahead to our code builder now. Okay, so let me pick the file. Now, if you go down here, you can use control and spacebar, you'll get all the options. So let's see. So right now we are getting only data type and RAML, right? But bottom you see your application running on port 9191 is available now. And now once that is available, now I'm able to see other options. So keep this in mind, okay? So now what I want, I want properties. So I just go ahead because in account data type, I want two properties for now for my testing. And we'll keep on, you know, uh, uh, you know, updating this data type in coming sessions, okay? So let's go ahead and say properties. What all properties I want? I want uh, first account ID. Okay. You can you can say enter and either you can use the tab or you can use a space bar. And if you say control space here, it will give you the options. You can go ahead and select that. This account ID should be a, a type string and required to. Okay. And keep on using control plus space bar. One more uh, property I want here. For example, I want status. So we can go ahead and uh, follow our structure here itself. So I'm taking this to, we'll be following this document throughout our sessions. Okay. So that will be creating a proper specification for this requirement uh you know uh, during our complete series okay and finally you'll be having one working uh, solution which is uh, you know a uh, uh, replica of some some uh, small bank api okay let's go there so what we are doing right now we are creating a global data type so let's go ahead type string even if you don't pass string and required parameter, right? By default, these values are type string and required is equal to true. Okay, so let's, so now if you see, I made a change and this file also saved, but did you see any change in, let's, let's cross check anything is, okay, so our account ID, there are two properties now for this data type. Now let's go back to our, our design center. Let, let's refresh this. Is there anything changed here? See, nothing has changed. That means the data I have here, the changes I have here, those are not sync with my design center eight. Okay. Is there anything published over here? I have not published anything to my exchange. So this exchange also empty right now. Okay. So let's go back quickly. So first thing, what we'll do, we'll sync 
our code builder with the design center. So I have option over here. I can go and say commit. Okay. So you can go ahead and pass a message over here. You say, it will ask you to pass the message. You can pass say, this is, this is, Copy of count data. Okay. Just there is, there is a button over here. You can say accept commit message. Sync changes. It will pull and push. And once this is done, see now the icon got changed. So your code builder and your your design center is in sync would you like to code periodically run git page i'll say ask me later so one by one we'll explore the options let's go ahead now and refresh your design center and you'll see that the changes from our code builder are pushed or committed to our design center okay now you can see here now let's go to the exchange. So that was the first part of our session. Now in the exchange, nothing has been published so far. Okay. So now let's go ahead to our, now you can use shortcuts. So you can say control shift P and you'll find the options here. So we have multiple options here. Okay. So if your sessions is expired, you know, the uh, sessions for your AnyPoint platform, then you can go ahead and say log into AnyPoint platform. If you want to deploy something from here, you, you can use this option, mule soft colon. You'll find all the options, importing mule project, you know, designing API, deploy to cloud up. All these options will be available here. We are going to use all these options one by one in coming sessions. But today, I use publish this asset to a exchange. So I'll say publish. publish it to close this console publish yeah so you can see here i got up now let me close this extension okay I'll just go to my, okay. Now, if you see, look at my screen, this is asking the project name. So just keep on, if you want to a, a, you know, change it, you can go ahead and change it. So that was my project name, set artifact ID. I don't want to change anything here. First time I am publishing it. So 1.0.0 .0 is fine. What will be my, uh, that was asset version. This is. API version. So now if you see, it's publishing it to the exchange. Okay. Once this is done, you'll find the asset in our exchange. Let's go ahead. Let me refresh. You can see the asset has been published here successfully from our account, uh, from our API code builder. See here, you can see the message also. Okay. Now let's, you can see here, type you have two fields, right? Okay, in stable. Yeah, so that's all from this session. In coming sessions, we'll try to write a, a specification for our bank API, where we'll be referring this global data type and build our modularized API specification. Thank you for watching this session. Hope you liked it. Bye-bye.